They say that the course of true love never runs smoothly, and none more so than my love affair with YouTube. And as Hartley Hare used to say, it's time for a story. Well, I've had an exceptionally busy and exciting week this week. It started off with a missed call from Rob from Extreme, so I gave him a call back and he said, have you sorted the starter yet for your compressor? I said, to be honest with you, Rob, I haven't. It's still working, so I've just left it. I don't really need to work the compressor that hard, so I'm just putting it out with it the way it is. You know, when I get round to it, I'll buy a starter. Don't do that, he said. I've got a starter coming for you tomorrow. Ah, oh, thanks very much, Rob. That's really good of you. And also, it comes complete with a completely new compressor as well. So you no need to worry about any more breakdowns for a while anyway. So, oh, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic, Rob. Yeah, the dimensions are online if you just want to check them against your compressor. Ah! So I thought, well, never mind. The ultimate plan was to put the compressor outside anyway. So I thought I'd move the ultimate plan forward put the compressor outside, the new one, the old compressor can go to my mate Rory, and then all the stuff that's on the bench can go where the compressor is, giving me more bench space. So anyway, that was the plan. I thought, absolutely fantastic. Then I had a, another phone call off Rob, and he said, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, well, I'm waiting for a compressor to come. And he said, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's just that Matt Urch is coming tomorrow and you could have come and met him. Oh no! He said, well don't worry, Matt Urch is coming at half past eight. These compressor people normally deliver late morning because there's nobody at my place to take charge of it. So anyway, I'm all excited to go. Then I receive a message just as I'm about to leave to say, poor old Matt, borrowed a trailer. <laughs> the trailer's gone wrong. He's absolutely stressed out and he's got to go all the way back home now. And uh, that's him finished. So I thought, ah, that's a shame, because Rob had uh, found a milling machine for him, and uh, that's what he was going there to pick up. So anyway, I thought, well, no worries. What I'll do is I'll start moving all my stuff around. So I was in the middle of it all, and then I got a random phone call. Matt's coming back. He's uh, got somebody that's going to give him a lift with a huge van. So I thought, ah, this is fantastic. But the only thing is, the compressor hadn't rolled up. So anyway, time was going on, and then there was a huge lorry that pulled up outside, and the compressor was on the lorry, which is absolutely fantastic. So we got the compressor off, got it round the back, dragging it across all the flower beds and everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, I got the call to say the Matt was there. Uh, poor old Matt, he'd uh, he'd had a ever such a stressful day, and uh, he literally had five minutes to fly in pick up this machine and get going back again. So he had no time at all and he's absolutely up against it. But I didn't want to miss this opportunity to meet him. So I flew down there and uh, yeah, I met Matt, which was fantastic. Where's your comb? <laughs> I gotta tell you, Doc, he's just as charismatic and good looking in real life. <laughs> you stressed out, mate? No, well, man. Uh... Oh, that's so good to meet you. It really is, this... is. So meeting Matt was absolutely fantastic, albeit for the 10 minutes I actually got to have a quick chat to him, real quick chat. You know, once we got all my stupid larking about, you know, <laughs> poor old Matt. It's just such a shame we didn't get to have a chat. And he says the same too. He's uh, sent me a couple of emails since, and he said, Trev, we really must meet up and have a proper chat. Uh, unfortunately, we live hundreds of miles apart. Uh, we'd love to have done a collaboration together, but how that would work, I don't know, because of the distances and everything else. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go down his shop at some stage and go and have a brew and a chat down there. He's also gonna come here and check out the van because he has to keep coming to Extreme for equipment and training and stuff like that. So that's what's gonna happen. Anyway, in amongst all of this, I couldn't help noticing out of the corner of my eye how much Rob from Extreme enjoys this whole YouTube business. He really does. He really, really is utterly committed to it all. He watches all of our videos. He reads all the comments. If somebody leaves us a negative comment, he gets really upset about it and very defensive, which is really nice to see because 
it just shows how much that guy is devoted to the channels that he helps out. Oh, that's a fantastic go. Rob. Yes, I'm back, I'm here again. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that camera, you know what I don't <laughs> Hey, thanks for the compressor, by the way. Right, mate, you deserve it. Thank you I, very I, I much. I watched that other video of the other one and I thought, oh my God, what is he doing? That's all right. It's, it's another 100,000 no. hours of service in that He's one. He's just, you know, a real, real, genuinely nice guy. Uh, anyway, talking about being a nice guy, he's given me some mugs to give away. So I'll give away the first mug. All you have to do to win this fantastic Extreme mug is answer the following question. What is Urchfab most famous for? What's his most famous project? I would have said. Anyway, answers in the comment section below and I'll post you this mug at my own expense, of course. What's coming up next week will be part two of the TIG Wilding video, which is probably what most of you guys are hoping to see anyway. I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all those people that have emailed me and messaged me about TIG Wilding. And to be quite honest with you, I've had so many emails, I have not got round to reading them all, let alone replying to anybody. I've been deluged with information. Um, I think a little bit of a point has been missed slightly because the point of my part one video was all about uh, somebody that had never welded before, never used a TIG welder anyway, more than likely used a MIG welder but had absolutely no experience of TIG. The whole point of the part one was just to show you that it's not as confusing as other people like to make out it is because I can't help thinking that there's a tiny little bit in some of these presenters where they're exceptionally clever guys and they like to uh, show you everything all at once and you're completely bamboozled and don't know what you're doing and I mean my way of uh, teaching is the first thing I want to do is get information across there's no point in you watching my videos, as far as I'm concerned, and being completely lost. It's nice to do stuff that's impressive, but I also want to uh, leave the viewer not confused, if you know what I mean. I'd rather give you some information you can pick up and take away, and that's what the part one was all about. It was all about, look, this machine is a very sophisticated piece of kit. This is a vast subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow it right down and I'm going to show you the biggest part of the machine narrowed down, which was just basically how to pick it up and start welding. I didn't cover hardly anything to do with all the vast array of subjects, but the emails have been so nice. What I've decided to do is I've decided to take all your sort of recommendations on board. So the first few episodes would be how I weld, how I weld with the welder and get the best results I get. And then I'm gonna build your recommendations in. So if you've got any recommendations, keep them coming guys. I'm making a note of it all. And what I'll do, I'll probably mention you in future episodes if I use your recommendation. And I'll say this was recommended by John or something. And uh, you know, he recommends these tungstens. And we'll see how it adjusts the welding uh, quality. So. Anyway, uh, that's it. That will be next week, part two. Still extremely basic. No of these confusing videos from me, hopefully. So I've built a shelf above the compressor, but I can't put the firewood back up there because the weight of it is going to pull the shed down. And also, I won't be able to reach it very well. So what I've decided to do is I've unearthed my old minis from there. The plan is that the minis are going to go up there and then the firewood is going to go where the minis are. Problem is I can't get the minis out because I've got all my van spares above and I've got to get all the van spares out which are filling the garden up rapidly now. <laughs> so I've got to get all those van spares out to be able to get the minis out because they are jammed in underneath that shelving and I've filled it up inside as well. Oh no. I think the mice have been about and also I've just discovered Harry. Well, I've Put old Harry in his box and 
pretty sure he'd gone into hibernation and he was still breathing no problems at all so he's certainly alive and I've put plenty of packing around him so to keep him warm but I have absolutely no idea what to do there's nowhere really that appropriate in the garden where he isn't going to get wet I've got no hole in the door of uh, my son's old playhouse for him to get out if he wakes up I'm a bit of a loss really any ideas so I've got myself all sorted out the compressors in there I've got my old boot floor out of the van there's going to be a door to go over there I'm going to soundproof it and box it off a bit more but of course I've got to keep ventilation for cooling and it's also got to breathe my firewood's under there my van bits are back up there and my mini furniture is up there well half of it the other half wouldn't fit in so what I'm going to do is get rid of one of them So this is my old front of a mini coming through the wall type of affair. I did use it initially as a kind of TV cabinet, but of course TVs have got so much bigger these days. We are talking 1998 when I built it, and to be honest with you, it wouldn't fare well putting too much weight in it either. I think it looks just fantastic as a display. It could be in a garage, could be a shop display, or just something unusual to have in your home that's exceptionally eye-catching. And uh, that's why I did it myself, I had three of these. I was on uh, Sky News Live back in 1998, so just 21 years ago. Unfortunately, I've been storing it in not perfect conditions, so it's managed to pick up a bit of rust on the framework now, so the framework could do with a rub down and a bit of a paint. It's also sustained a few scratches here and there, some of the chrome works just starting to go a little bit rusty, but it still looks quite a stunning piece of artwork I think. Uh, like I say it'd be absolutely fantastic for uh, advertising purposes or something like that. So what I've decided to do is get shot of it. I didn't really want to but at the end of the day needs must. Um, I've, I've got to get rid of stuff to take new stuff on uh, which is uh, kind of the, the thing it's come to now. So I'm quite happy to do that and I'm quite happy to let this this one go anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a list, eBay listing uh, local pickup only or you can get your own courier to come and pick it up and uh, somebody might be in for a bargain because I'm going to stick it on a starting bid I think of a pound and I can't remember how I end them now <laughs> that's, that's it for this one yeah. see you on the next one see you on the next one I can't remember <laughs> you put me on the spot <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for this one see ya just watching treads in the place right, bye for now <laughs> I can't believe you. <laughs>